Thank you. These uh, words are like music to my ears. Um, I, I, I try to formulate what I wanted to say because it's, it doesn't make, it doesn't matter at once I, once one applies the essential self, but um, I've been playing with this for the last six months and uh, there's one area that's, uh, don't know how to. I've had an eat, eating disorder since the age of three, and um, it's it's a lot better. It comes and goes. It disappears completely, and then it comes back. And I just wanted to find out how do I, um, what am I needing to be more aware of because it's such an old knowing. When you first feel the impulse to engage in your eating disorder, whether it's anorexic or bulimic or whatever it is for you, just before you fulfill that impulse, just before you do what the feeling wants you to do, pause. Don't do what the feeling is telling you to do. Just pause. And a allow the feeling, which is by definition uncomfortable, to, to, to come to the surface. Now, the motivation to engage in your de eating disorder is, is the motivation to avoid this uncomfortable feeling to make it better through eating too much or too little or whatever it is. So when you don't do what this feeling tells you to do, there will be a little rebellion in you. Everything in you is going to scream, particularly if you've been rehearsing this for, for many years, everything else, everything in you is going to scream. I can't bear this feeling. Please relieve me through whatever it is. So you, you have to be courageous here. You have to, the desire to get to the root of this eating disorder has to be stronger in you than the desire to avoid the discomfort of the feeling. So that you have to decide ahead of time. Do I really want to get to the root of this eating disorder? Is the desire to do so stronger than my desire to relieve the discomfort when it comes up. So that's obviously the case for you. I, I have no doubt that that is the case, but you have to really know that. You have to establish in yourself, in the moment, not, not just in general, but in the moment the impulse arises, my desire to get to the root of this feeling that has been ruling me since I was three years old is stronger than my desire to relieve the discomfort of the feeling. Now, if you're clear about that, you're a long way there already. So having established that, when this feeling comes up, you don't do what it tells you to do, which is to overeat or undereat or whatever it is. You face the feeling because the relief that you seek from the discomfort of the feeling doesn't lie in its relief through an object. It relies, it lies on the other side of the feeling. You have to go back through the feeling. The relief, which is the experience of peace or happiness that you are seeking through this bulimic or whatever it is, activity, what you're really seeking is not relief 
from that particular feeling. You're seeking the happiness, the peace that lies at the heart of that and indeed all feelings. But you have to go back through the feeling the other way. And when I say you, you have to go back through it, you don't actually have to journey back through the feeling, but you have to face it. You have to turn around. Instead of going outwards towards the object, whatever that is for you, you have to turn around the other way, face the feeling. And that's really enough just to face it. Be very careful that you don't turn what I'm saying now into a subtle practice which is designed to get rid of the feeling. That would be a, a, a very subtle way that the separate self appropriates what is being suggested here and uses it to perpetuate its activity of avoidance. Um, are you saying that I could um, absorb, let it come into my awareness, absorb into my awareness or cover it outwardly? No, it just you, you establish yourself as the, the, the pure awareness, the space of awareness, the inherently allowing space of awareness, which knows no resistance. So the feeling itself is not a problem for awareness, because awareness doesn't know resistance. Awareness is like a TV screen. It, 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 it cannot resist what is taking place on it. That, that is why awareness cannot suffer. Suffering is always for the imaginary separate self. Awareness cannot suffer because it cannot resist. So this feeling is not uncomfortable for awareness. It's uncomfortable for the separate self, for the illusory separate self. So anything you do to relieve the discomfort of the feeling will perpetuate subtly the separate self that is at its origin. So don't touch the feeling, don't do anything to it. You have to, you have to establish in your experience, not intellectually, although you can start with a thought, but the thought must take you to the feeling understanding that you are this resistanceless openness. And there's one way you can tell whether you're doing that. And that is, ask yourself this uncomfortable feeling that's, that's rising and getting stronger and stronger. Ask yourself, can I live with this feeling for the rest of my life? Now, you have to be able to answer yes to that question. That's the test. Because that's how it is for awareness. Awareness would be perfectly happy to live with the feeling for the rest of its life because it knows no resistance. There is not the slightest impulse in awareness to replace one feeling with another. To say, I don't want what is present. I want what is not present. That's why its nature is happiness. That's what happiness is, the absence of resistance. So the way to test for yourself, am I truly, truly open to this feeling? Or am I subtly practicing welcoming in order to get rid of the feeling? That's how the separate self appropriates the non-dual understanding. So the way to test that is to say to yourself, can I live with this feeling for the rest of my life? And you have, it requires courage because this, the feeling is going to get stronger. It's going to scream louder and louder and louder. Please, the, the bottle, the sandwich, the fridge, the drink, whatever it is for you, whatever each of us does to relieve these feelings of discomfort, the, the, the body-mind is going to demand more and more and more that you relieve it in your habitual ways. So you have to be, one, you have to be clear. It's not a matter of willpower. It's not a matter of effort. It's a matter of understanding. So first of all, be clear and then be courageous. And I don't mean courageous to, to fight the feeling. There's no fight involved. Only the ego would fight the feeling. It's courageous precisely to stay as the openness. Thank and you. That is very clear because I did have, I have these moments of it biting back very strong. 
and and because that's an expectation. And so I think you that was very clear. Yeah. It's it's not to yes. go any way. Awareness is Yes, has in, no in other words you have to get to the stage where you're so comfortable with the presence of the uncomfortable feeling that it's no longer uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable for awareness. Awareness does not know the meaning of the word uncomfortable. And when you can truly say that, when you can truly say to this raging impulse that's r r raging th through the body, when you can truly say you are, you are totally allowed in me, you can stay forever. Then ask yourself the question, where is the discomfort? Where is the motivation to go for the object? So clarity first and then courage. Thank you very much. It's very clear. <laughs>